I, I think I'd probably better use this. I woke up this morning with a frog in my throat, and it's still there. <laughs> so, anyway, um, the other person that's been very instrumental in what we know about Thomas Carter is Margaret Gunn, who's a member of the research committee. Too. Okay. Um, Robert has um, given us a, a little bit of a reason for doing this by um, um, maybe the many questions that, that visitors have. Who is, who is Thomas Carter? Is he related to Robert King Carter? I mean, that's a big question. So, what um, I guess what I started out trying to do when I first came here. Um, was uh, I wanted to know are they related, <laughs> you know, and uh, a lot of people wa were um, you know hoping they were related, but I wanted to find out for sure. So oh, let's see that. I just need this one. All right, Robert. Oh, okay. I think I've got it now. Um, basically, um, everything you ever wanted to know is right here in our library. And, um, yeah, it's not showing up. Oh, well. Um, I, I'll just point up here my, I brought the pointer because it was going to work, but <laughs> it doesn't work. Um, this this uh, lady here, Christine Jones, is, is just a, an amazing person. I wish I had known her. I mean, she spent hours upon hours in the, in the Lancaster County Courthouse and wrote down everything and published, published, published. And this book is, actually it's in the gift shop, you can buy it. And um, in there, she, she does a very good job of pulling all the information together about um, the Thomas Carters of Lancaster County. Now, she didn't quite sort them all out, but that's what I'm going to try to do. But the, the records are there, and um, it's fascinating reading if you want to read court records. <laughs> so anyway, this is in, uh, this is in the uh, library and in the gift shop. Um, this is my, uh, my little uh, compilation that, <clears throat> by the way, is all sold out. So um, <clears throat> Doug and, um, and Robert are going to try to help me either, well, uh, get reprints, or I'm, I'm thinking about trying to revise it and add a lot of <clears throat> new stuff. So, anyway, that's um, this is in the in the library, but not in the gift shop right now. This uh, this book here is is sort of like the the Bible of the Thomas Carters, but there are a lot of errors in the Bible. Thing. And, and there are a lot of errors in here, but um, this is in our library, and uh, Kagi Chase, is Kagi here? Um, she donated it to the library, and I think the book is, I don't know how much it's worth, but it, if you go online and try to buy it, you're going to pay big bucks for it. And anyway, this is a very good book. Um, this, uh, the... Uh, Carter descendant databases are uh, what Kathy Galgano and I are <clears throat> responsible for, and um, Kathy's taking care of of, um, <clears throat> of most of I mean, most of the um, Robert King Carter descendant database, and I'm I've been working on the Thomas Carter database. <coughs> Okay. Yeah. Okay, this is where I want to be. Um, let's see. Oh, this is a, this, I wanted to point this out. <clears throat> I can count 12 Thomas Carters in Lancaster County between 1650 and 1750. And we'd be here all day if I talk about all of them, so I won't. Uh, basically, there are four <clears throat> that are of interest. The first one is this um, 
Major Thomas Carter, who um, was the first Thomas Carter in Lancaster County, and um, he, uh, he appears on the uh, um, tithable list next to John Carter, our John Carter. Um, and he's registered um, as a debtor to our John Carter. He bought a, a plantation um, called the um, uh, William Brokus Plantation. And um, in the meantime, though, he, he bought another, another plantation, uh, George Marsh Plantation, but then he died, 1659. Um, oddly enough, John Carter married the, the uh, widow of um, William Brokus. And so, you know, there are a lot of really close associations <coughs> between uh, John Carter and, um, and Thomas Carter. And <coughs> John was the administrator. So, even though it's unproven, um, I'm pretty certain that and they're brothers. And um, John is um, the older brother, probably, of, uh, of um, Thomas. All right, this, this guy is this. This guy is the big mystery man. He first um, appeared in Lancaster County in 1663, and he left in 1665. He was called Captain Thomas Carter. He was a justice of the court. He had 15 to 20 tithables, so, you know, he's a big shot. He appraised the states, received bills value, um, that, um, for a lot of tobacco, and but he left. It was no longer for, for several years, from 1665 to 1670, uh, there's no, no Thomas Carters. So, who is this guy? We don't really know. He's a mystery man. Um, okay. This, this is um, our ancestor, Mr. Thomas Carter, and he's always referred to as Mr. Gentleman. Um, uh, you know, he's, he's an important person, but he's not a captain. All right, in, in 1670, he's a, an executor of goods for this uh, Robert Reed. In 1670, he married Catherine Dale, of Dale, his daughter of Edward Dale, who was the clerk of the court. He was, in 1671, Edward Dale appointed him as a, um, a deputy clerk. So, you know, he had a job. He was a merchant. He had a job, and uh, uh, everything was going very well. Okay? Um, this is um, other other parts of his uh, his um, presence in the county, and, but he never had many titles. One or two, maybe. When his sons grew up, he had a few more. And um, in 1673, um, he was a titleable and probably a slave um, called Dick was a titleable. So. <clears throat> He's a merchant attorney for an Edith Smythe, uh, yeah, I think I spelled it Smythe, in uh, what I think is Southampton, England. So he's, you know, he's doing stuff all over. All right, 1674, guess what? His father-in-law gives the, the couple, Catherine and, and Thomas, 500 acres of land, a Negro boy named Dick, livestock, a house, everything. What a deal. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, um, 
And then he goes on, he's, he's busy. He's doing a lot of things um, as, as he's getting older. And as late as 1698, he, uh, he de declined an appointment as a justice of the court. So this other Thomas, Captain Thomas Carter, was a justice of the court and left. So they're two different people. They're, they couldn't be the same person. So anyway, then um, Thomas died in 1700. And um, uh, it's thought that he, well, he was about 70 years old at that time. So he was probably born about 1630. OK. Um, Okay. Um, I think at, at, uh, six, in 1670, I think he came to this count for the first time. So basically, any other Thomas Carter's before this time was not our guy. And uh, <clears throat> Christine Jones um, actually points this out in, in her book. Um, with the court record, she doesn't pass any judgment other than to say that Thomas Carter was a servant in uh, 1669. And this is the, the court document. And here are the justices up here. Um, there's a, a Robert Griggs, who's a justice. And um, on top of that, Edward Dale was the clerk of the court. So, he, you know, he was responsible for writing this document. Um, there are two, these two court documents um, are weird. Because in um, December of 1670, it, it actually says that, um, that Thomas Carter, a servant to Mr. Robert Griggs, appeared in court to um, judge his age. And... Um, but Mr. Griggs didn't show up. So it was deferred. Less than a month later, same thing. <coughs> Thomas Carter's servant is um, ordered to be, uh, as a, he came into the country without an indenture. And according to Act, which I think is Virginia law, he had to be. He had to be recognized by the court. And again, Griggs doesn't show up. So between Griggs and Dale, I think this guy's free to do whatever he wants. But it's his first appearance. And, um, and it actually, <clears throat> this is all six months after he married uh, Catherine Dale. What a strange, really strange thing. Society, but um, it survived all these years. And what's notable is that here's his signature Thomas Carter, his book. But look at the date 1669. Did um, Edward Dale give him this book, maybe? And he put his name in it and, and the date. And up here, he's got his name up here, Thomas Carter, Rappahannock, Virginia. So he's from Lancaster County. OK, um, 
this is another very significant part of the uh, prayer book, and uh, it's been very misleading over the over the years. Because in here, this is the, the page for the form of sol solemnization of matrimony, and here's the recording about the marriage, way over here on the side, very obscure. But uh, this is what it, it says. Uh, with this book, meaning the prayer book, Reverend Mr. John Shepherd, on Wednesday, the 4th day of May, 1670, was married, Mr. Thomas Carter of Barford. A very significant little phrase. <coughs> in the county of, of Lancaster in Virginia, and Catherine Dale, the eldest daughter of Edward Dale of the same county. And it's um, just, you know, very obscure. So, Barford, everybody said, Thomas Carter of Barford, Barford Plantation, Barford here, Barford there. I think it's a, a, a misnomer. It's, uh, it's a it's significant because uh, why would he put in in there of Barford? <coughs> he did not name his his plantation Barford. Okay, <clears throat> then the next guy, and <clears throat> this is the one you're probably most interested in because he's Robert Robert King Carter's associate. And he's the uh, second son of, of, of Mr. Thomas Carter. He's, he's born in 1672, um, executor of his father's will in 1700, a county court justice for many years, had many titles, captain in the uh, Lancaster militia, thus Captain Thomas Carter. He was attorney, a juryman, Appraiser of estates, collector of tithables, and actually served with Robert Carter as the uh, joint church, uh, church warden of uh, Christ Church Parish. And then he was a, a, a business associate of, of Robert and was named in Robert Carter's will. He um, probably served on the, on the vestry and um, he died in 1733. Um, just, you know, one year after Robert, uh, some people say he was really stressed out from the death of, of Robert Carter. Okay, here's the record for him. This is the um, list of 13 children that Thomas Carter Sr. and Catherine Dale had. And um, in spite of the times, uh, nine, nine of them lived to adulthood. There were four, four infants that died um, young. Okay, so here's, here's Thomas Jr. And uh, the next, yeah, this, this is what's recorded in the, in the prayer book. Thomas, son of Thomas, was born on the fourth, the fourth day of June, 1672 between 3 and 4 o'clock, which is very significant, <laughs> in the morning, and was baptized at the new church. And this is the wooden church. The new wooden church. Now, was there an old wooden church before the new church? We don't, we don't know. But uh, anyway, these, um, these are his, his godparents. All right, uh, this, this portrait, which is a, kind of made up in many ways, uh, <clears throat> is in the Lancaster County Courthouse. But uh, it, there was a portrait of him that supposedly burned in the Chicago fire. But um, a, 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 a photograph of it was used to paint this portrait. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Sorry about that. Um, in uh, Robert Carter's will, he's mentioned several times. He's, um, 
he's mentioned as a, a good friend and relation, but I think the, the relations were really Man Page, Benjamin Harrison, and the friends were uh, George Eskridge, uh, George Turberville, and, and Thomas Carter. Um, he mentions, he gives apparel, wearing apparel to his friends. He, um, he's also saying that <clears throat> there's a shipment that Captain Thomas Carter is going to be responsible for to dispose of. And then um, he, he says, uh, lastly, that <clears throat> Captain Thomas Carter has been in business with him for, for some time. And um, he is to be uh, no, not troubled by law on his account. You know, it's a pretty, pretty nice thing for Robert, you know, Robert Carter to say. Okay, <clears throat> where, where was the, uh, the plantation? We did an archaeology um, study um, well, in 2016. But it, it, it came after um, an archaeology study that had been done back in the 1980s by Mary Ball Washington <coughs> Museum and Library. So anyway, we, um, the, the Carter Society actually uh, uh, sponsored this, but uh, <coughs> Christ Church and Mary Ball both were um, co-sponsored. No, no uh, donations, but <laughs> co-sponsors. And um, anyway, um, we had a we, we hired the archaeologists from Fairfield Foundation, Dave Brown and Dane Harpole, and um, the, we had volunteers from all over, uh, from Christ Church, Mary Ball, neighbors came up. So my my son even showed up, believe it or not, and. Um, we, sur we surveyed the, the area at the uh, fork of the eastern and, and western branch of Cortona. And um, oh, this um, this lady here was pretty important too, in that she cataloged a lot of this, uh, a lot of the artifacts. And she's uh, uh, with the George Washington boyhood, uh, very farm home. Okay. Um, all right. This um, this just this is just a little re reiteration of what um, Edward Dale did. Um, this is this is giving the 500 acres to to his uh, daughter and to Thomas um, as a deed of gift. So what a nice gift. And then following that, um, in, in the same <coughs> the same. Um, court document, he's giving the, the Negro boy a uh, dick, one gray cropped male, and her male colt, six young cows, and the calves, half of the hogs, and now in the, in the possession, that should be now, in the possession of uh, Thomas Carter. So, you know, what a father in law. <laughs> Pretty nice. Okay, this, um, this is a 17... 84 map uh, that we're all familiar with of the, the, the Corotoma Eastern Western Branch. This this entire area <coughs> encompassed the 500 acres given to, to, to the newlyweds. Down here is Corotoma, and on this map is uh, George Carter Esquire, who's, who's living here. Um, and then there are other, well, this is Verville up here. And, uh, we're, we're familiar with. But, okay, this is an aerial view just showing the two branches. So this, this whole peninsula was, uh, was the property that uh, Thomas Carter was given. A little closer view. And um, <clears throat> to me, um, this is an ideal place for... Uh, homestead in Virginia in the 17th century. Um, I'll, I'll show you later, but up here, what we think is where the house was. We think there's a, grave, a graveyard here. There's actually a spring 
right up here that feeds into this cove. And probably that cove was um, was navigable um, back at the time. Now it's just kind of marshy. <coughs> okay, here's the, the crew. Part, I mean, only part of them. It was a, we had like 30 people all total. And you might even recognize Laura there. And <clears throat> so there, there were Christchurch volunteers, Mary Ball volunteers, neighbors. Okay, and um, this just shows one of the test holes. And, uh, and then a whole bunch of pipe stems. Pipe stems were very popular. Well, they grew the tobacco when I'm smoking. And then this just shows um, one of the sitting trays and um, how we picked out these artifacts. <clears throat> and they're, they're actually, they're all um, 17th and 18th century artifacts, very confined area. And in some other areas, <clears throat> there, there were some uh, 19th century um, things that we picked up. Some uh, old nails. This is a uh, piece of brick that has some of the mortar, the oyster shell mortar still on it. And um, would you believe it? Uh, these architects, uh, this is one of the last holes that were dug. What did we find? Whole bricks down inside this test hole. And would you believe it? They said, eh, that's the end of the dig. <laughs> Maybe next time. So. And this, this just shows the, uh, the property. And um, this is West Point Road. And, and this is actually called West Point. Reville is up here. There's a little farmhouse here, um, 20th century. And we found some uh, 19th century artifacts here. But the concentration up here, tons of stuff. And so we think this this is uh, where the home, the house was, and maybe that um, feature they called it, the whole bricks, might be part of a foundation <coughs> or a, a hearth or something. So, and a little spring right here still runs. The, the house is here, they had their, their dairy um, or refrigerator close by and drinking water. So, Good deal. Okay. Um, this is um, um, sort of my little pet project, looking for the graveyard. They had to have a graveyard, right? The family always buried their their dead very close to the house, and. Uh, uh, that was mentioned earlier about <clears throat> about the uh, um, Robert Carter or John Carter uh, burial ground. Maybe it was down <clears throat> near Corton. So, so anyway, I, I'm searching, and this is what I thought I was going to find. <laughs> I'll lay it out. <laughs> this is Thomas. <laughs> it didn't work out that way. <laughs> but um, so anyway, I was disillusioned. So, <clears throat> but we do know from the, the uh, Lancaster County court records, um, the last property that was sold of the original 500 acres was sold by an Edward Carter, who was like a great-grandson, and his wife, and uh, <clears throat> sold to, um, um, yeah, right. In, in, um, but in that deed, it actually says that um, the property is being sold, but there's, there are two graveyards, two Carter graveyards, one on the upper plantation, one on the lower peck plantation, and um, the Carters are <clears throat> to have access. Okay, this is a bad, bad photo, but here's the little 
little uh, notation. And uh, I don't know if you all know Ann Carter. <clears throat> She's one of our cousins. Anyway, um, um, she was out there one day. I hope you need it. Who had the reason for this picture? Mainly is to show her, of course. But um, uh, this this ivy vine right here is pretty old, and that the tree itself is a huge oak tree. <coughs> The ivy vine goes up, there are little bits of uh, <clears throat> sprigs of ivy around, and depressions in the ground. So I thought, oh, I, you know, I think I found it. <laughs> so um, <clears throat> this is uh, Faye Parrish. She's uh, the founder of the Carter Society. And I had her out there with the um, earth probe looking for soft spots. We found, found several spots where you could push down, it's solid, and then move a little bit, soft, 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 solid. So that's a good indication. This is another, talking about witching, or witches, this is a <coughs> witching rod. And <coughs> it works. And you take this thing and some, some people, not for everyone. Not for everyone. <laughs> well, it won't work for me. And I've got a face mate. <laughs> but um, several people could take this rod and walk up to a spot and it would go, choom, like go to the other side, choom. Very prominent area. Sunny Ash did that. Sunny Ash did that. Yeah. And it, it works. Okay, so then we um, we hired Bruce Bevan. I don't know if anybody knows Bruce. He lives in Weems. But um, um, really the significant thing here is my son, my son Tom. <laughs> and it's hard to get him interested in this stuff. <laughs> but anyway, this, this is a um, <clears throat> ground penetrating radar recorder that, that Bruce brought out to the site. And, oh, that's my grandson, too, which is even more important. <laughs> <laughs> I got two of them out. And, um, uh, <clears throat> and uh, anyway, this is the recorder. Um, this is Donna Anderson. She's the president of the, um, the Carter Society. Um, other, other members of the group. And oh, guess who showed up too? <laughs> <laughs> Doug Walker. And uh, we really appreciated him coming out and uh, giving us a support. Um, and this just shows the device. <clears throat> it's like a sled that goes across the ground. And um, just pull it, Bob? They just pull it? Mm -hmm. they yeah. Just manually pull it? <laughs> right, it's hooked up electrically to the uh, generator in the, in the car and um, I, don't, I, don't, I don't have a picture of the, of the image it makes which I can't read it anyway it's just a bunch of squiggly bombs <laughs> but um, actually <clears throat> Bruce did the um, ground penetrating radio, radar out here too so um, but anyway here I am and actually Miriam I think you took that picture <laughs> I have a little prayer from the prayer book, but I'm sure I didn't get it right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Anyway, these are, are three areas that react to the rod, react to the, the witching apparatus, and they reacted to the ground penetrating radar. So I think we found it. And, um, well, I can, I can identify probably <laughs> at least 12 people who are buried there, and four of them are infants. Poor little Diana died of a, a putrid sore throat. Um, <laughs> Daniel, Daniel died of a fit. And um, William and uh, Nicholas died of a colery. Anybody know what a colery is? <laughs> C-O-L-R-E-Y. 
Well, probably not, because I don't think <laughs> cholera was that, that important you know, in those times. And besides that, if um, you know if there was cholera around, a bunch of people would have died. So um, I, I, want, I don't want to go on too long here, but uh, the um, another another part of our activities has been looking for English ancestry. And um, I can categorically say that none of our carters here ever said anything about who they were related to. They, they didn't, they made no reference to fathers, brothers, sisters. And I think it, it might, be a, might be a reason for it. The Puritans are, were around, you know, and the Puritans were, were very wrathful, and, and our guys were all royalists, and you know, you know they probably didn't want the Puritans back in England knowing who their relatives were, so they didn't didn't make a big deal out of it. But here here's some of the the, the few clues that we have. Um, the prayer book entry of, of Barford means something. I mean, why would he put it in there? Even though it was never used again in the public record until Dr. Miller came, <coughs> came along and, and um, claimed that <coughs> it was his plantation. All right, <coughs> children's names, <coughs> especially, uh, well, Thomas, John, William, and Nicholas. Nicholas is a very uncommon uh, Carter name. <coughs> Um, you know, merchant occupation, um, we know that for sure. He had London, London connections, and he had a very close relationship, of course, with Edward Dale. And um, <coughs> Diana Skipwith Dale um, was a pretty important lady for her time. And she was a, actually of royal descent, and um, her father was a Sir. Sir Henry Skipwith of Leicestershire. So, you know, these were, these were pretty important people. And not only that, but Dinah's first cousins were um, important Virginia personages. That, um, I think it was Henry Diggs or, and William Chichley, I think. But um, anyway, they, they, were, they were related closely. <laughs> and um, then, of course, the, the Dales and Skipwiths <coughs> were uh, strong royalists. Okay. Um, this is another little clue that, yeah, it's circumstantial, but this is the, the coat of arms of the, the Bedfordshire Carters. And, um, in England, and um, this this is a um, talbot uh, rising from a crown, which is uh, significant. And Joseph Carter, who was a, a grandson of, of Thomas Carter, used the seal. This isn't a very good image, but supposedly this is T C for Thomas Carter. Here's the talbot. Here's the crown. So that's a clue. And um, I mean, this is this is another clue that we're all very familiar with. But it's for the um, John Carter family, and <clears throat> actually right up here. Here's this. Here's that seal, or here's the coat of arms. And <clears throat> this is the Carters of Hertfordshire and uh, their coat of arms, and, and again, uh, uh, and again, uh, Robert Carter's seal, which is the same as this. So, you know, these um, heraldry probably had some uh, significance. They, they uh, as far as we know, they did not bear arms, meaning that they didn't <coughs> register with the College of Arms in, in London. But uh, they obviously use the uh, use the <coughs> coat of arms. Okay. Um, 
there were a group of eight of us, I mean, we're really into this. <laughs> eight of us went to Bedfordshire last May and had, oh, a wonderful time. And um, we, were, we were looking for the, the Carters of Kempston and uh, the Ansel family, which is very important. Um, there's a tenement in Barford that was willed to Thomas Carter in 1649, and this tenement was to be sold to pay bills. So we don't really have any proof of uh, who Thomas Carter's father was, but these are all circumstantial. This is um, all sites in Great Barford, and uh, <clears throat> this is a painting, but uh, it's, I mean, these churches are so lovely over there. They're wonderful. Okay, at the, uh, the Bedford, Bedfordshire, Bedfordshire uh, his, Family History Society uh, location, we found this, uh, this pedigree, which uh, starts with William Carter, uh, John Carter, William, <laughs> William, you know, these names don't help at all. <laughs> there, there are too many Williams, too many Thomases. Okay, here's a big family here. <clears throat> Thomas, um, who was born in 1575 and died in 1647 and wrote, wrote this will I just mentioned. Uh, look at all his brothers and sisters. Nicholas and William are his, uh, his siblings. And, uh, well, and Ansel, Ansel, Ansel down here. So, <clears throat> okay, um, Thomas had, had two sons, William, who died early, and then Thomas, who we know nothing about. This guy, we know, was an apprentice in London in uh, 1634, and supposedly had a couple of children. Um, but we know nothing more about him. Could this be the father of our Thomas Carter Sr.? Could be. All right, one last um, quickie, which uh, is kind of relevant in that uh, <clears throat> we did the, uh, the Carter YD and A analysis um, with family tree DNA. And um, <clears throat> there are basically three Carters that we think could be associated with Lancaster County. Um, Tom, uh, uh, well, John, John Carter of Lancaster, um, and then Thomas Carter of Lancaster, and then maybe Thomas Isle of White. That mystery man could be Thomas Isle of White. So anyway, <clears throat> we did these analyses and uh, basically these are just comparisons between Thomas Carter and John John Carter both of Lancaster who we know were here and associated with each other they they might have been related 1920 years ago maybe <laughs> and that's 64 generations ago if you compare Thomas uh, Lancaster and uh, Thomas Isle White, it's an even longer period of time. And John and Thomas Isle White, again, a very long period of time. But they're all Celtic people. They're all in this what's called a, a haplogroup, group, R1B. So they're related, yes, but long time ago. All right, um, basically, John and Robert Carter knew each other. <clears throat> um, knew Thomas Carter and his family they interacted socially in, in Christchurch Parish and business associates, but they were not related in a genealogical time frame. Uh, they shared common ancestors perhaps 2,000 years ago. The end. <laughs>
And there was a bubble in that water. Tell us about the pubs that you and your cousin. Were there any good pubs? Oh my gosh. <laughs> I can't show.